Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to give you a speech about uh, uh, China industry software benchmark data. Um, this data is uh, end of the, uh, by the end of the, uh, July and uh, have the same kind of version as the September 18 uh, Chinese uh, conference. It's the same version because this uh, uh, PPT is translated from the Chinese to English and everyone will hear it in Spanish. So uh, if there are some uh, misused words, please don't laugh at me, okay? Um, first about me, uh, I'm the SPI China technical expert and uh, this picture is the last time I gave the presentation in Beijing. And uh, I'm the Microsoft China as the senior software uh, technical evangelist. My search field is the uh, uh, more personal computing and the next generation human and computer interaction. And I previously worked for uh, Actel Lucent and Nautil as the quality manager. Now today I, uh, I'm so glad to present as the C, uh, CSBSG uh, data repository and uh, every of the uh, report from this database and I will give you the data about China industry software benchmark about the uh, full productivity, defect density, maintenance, and the uh, workload distribution. And if you have the more interesting about the, <laughs> about the data, you can uh, download the data from our uh, website, okay. About CSBSG, uh, China is the China Software Benchmarking Standard Groups. Uh, was found in January 1916. And uh, SPI China built benchmark data platform and we have the two repository. One is for software development, another is for the maintenance data, like the SBSG. This data originate from the trusted China organizations. And the China standard released at April 1970. Uh, and last year we cooperated with SBSG and have the data exchange with the International Database Repository. So uh, uh, today's report we all generate from the China repository, okay. And this repository we have the uh, 5,971. And this kind of data is uh, with the high reliability and the full project life cycle. And, uh, and this year we have the 1,035 last year uh, we import the uh, 836, and uh, uh, we have the uh, same kind of selection as the SBSG. All this data is uh, after the uh, 2012. And uh, we classify the uh, data. Um, we have the rigorous check and cross check for the quality before adding our repositories. Each project then assign a range from the A to D. We select from the level A and the level C data as our repository. And this is our data processing workflows. We have the three rows. One is the data author from our partners. And the second one is the data administrator. Um, it's a full-time employee which uh, will check the data integrity and the data auditing. And then we'll assign the organization number and allocate the items. And uh, what is more important uh, is this precise. Uh, we will give the clean of the data for enormous uh, treatment. And then after that, the, uh, the clean data will give the audit expert. The expert will give the estimation and the counting for the functional point and give the precising audit. And then uh, we have the baseline comparison and then merge the data to the data storage. And then we give the baseline report and the update the baseline database. Now let me show you the data. And this is the industry-wide productivity data. You can see the uh, average one is 7.06. That means if we work eight hours a day, uh, each functional point we need almost a day. And you can see the data range from the uh, 10 percentile to 19 percentile. For the 19 percentile, maybe the three times. For the uh, 75 percentile, maybe the twice time of the average one. Okay. So next one, we will separate the industry sector's productivity data. 
And uh, this, this sequence is selected by the number of our database repository. And the finance one is our, the finance one is the most, uh, uh, our reliable partners. We first uh, uh, pilot uh, IFPAC, Cosma, and NASMA in the uh, China bank. And the most, popu uh, most popular uh, top four China bank use this kind of uh, size estimating, cost estimating. Uh, for, for example, for the internal charge of the R&D center and for the budget of the next year or the next section. And also for the internal charge fee of the different, uh, 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 different uh, department of inside organization. And you can see that the average one is uh, 12.70. Uh, it's almost uh, the um, one point, uh, uh, it's much bigger than the average one of the world, uh, of the industry-wide productivity data. And you can see that the second one is the telecommunication software. And this kind of software is almost a bad, um, sorry. This kind of the uh, software is have the rigorous uh, software process and have the uh, full life cycle data. So it's the second, uh, it's the uh, second round uh, our golden partners to have the uh, test of the size estimation and the cost estimation. And the next one is the government and the uh, uh, Chinese uh, treasury department use the uh, size estimation and the cost estimation in the budget control. Um, and uh, the next one is the energy and the transportation and the manufacture. You can see the data of the annual one and the from range of the 10 percentile to the 19 percentile, okay? And the next one you can see in the past four years we have the productivity benchmark data trends. And we just discussed something. Uh, you can see that uh, it's at the peak of the last year. And this year we involved the much uh, project with uh, maybe the agile and uh, with the uh, uh, application, we, which let the data dropped, okay? And uh, the next one is uh, uh, from the different kind of the phase, about requirement phase and the design phase and the development phase, test phase and the implementation phase. You can see that the uh, development phase occupies the full a uh, 41 percentage of the total phase. I think uh, this data is increased from the past year. And the requirement phase is the 13 percentage. Uh, if you have uh, used the Agile and uh, compared to the traditional one, maybe the requirement phase need more percentage for the Agile ones, okay? And the... Um, uh, that is the defect density, you can see that. And uh, we, uh, we uh, try to measure the defect uh, density of the per functional point. And the average one is the 0 0.38. And uh, you can see that from the 10 percentile to the 19 percentile, each functional point we have the uh, 0 0.3 defects. Okay. And the... Uh, Last one is the MSP of the China top 10 city. Uh, you know that uh, China is a big, uh, is a really big country and uh, the economy is not so balanced. So some, some cities are very high, uh, while well, other cities are low. Uh, you can see that which uh, I try to point out all the location of our maps. And I will give you, you know that the Beijing is the capital city of the China, like the Mexico city of the Mexico. And uh, beside of the Dalian, which is very near, which is very near the uh, Japanese. Uh, so uh, the out, uh, overseas outsourcing is the number one of the MSP, about 309,016. And uh, otherwise, of inside China, uh, most expensive city is the Beijing. <laughs> you can see that is the uh, 7,000, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, three three thousand seven hundred and fifty six, and uh, we we discussion with the HAPA with the Finland's uh, data. He said that almost the Finland is the uh, thirty USD dollars around, and the Denmark is much higher. Uh, I think this data is not so um, 
is not so crazy in your thinking. Okay, the next one is the Shanghai. Um, and the Shanghai is the 3,668. And the third is the Shenzhen. Shenzhen is uh, uh, in the past year, in the uh, past year, Shenzhen is the number four. And this year is uh, raised to number three. Um, uh, do you know that Shenzhen is the hardware center in China, which is very popular for the cheap hardware and the fast uh, uh, production and uh, very popular for the uh, very popular um, very po uh, what we call it is CTE and hardware ecosystem center. And uh, Shenzhen raised 2% of the MMS in the past one years. So it's the uh, number three of the China city. And number four is the Guangzhou. Uh, Guangzhou, uh, uh, every month cost uh, 3,537. Uh, 3, and uh, this four city is the Taiwan city in China. And uh, you can see uh, the, uh, the Dalian, Huangzhou, Nanjing, Xiamen, Tianjin, and Wuhan is the tier two city. And uh, uh, Dalian is very famous for the overseas outsourcing, so the data is rather high. It's not uh, compared with the inside software development. And Hangzhou, which is a location for the Alibaba, you do know that, uh, is a very famous e-commercial company. And uh, for Nest East, is a very famous for gaming company. And uh, so this city is uh, uh, highest in the tier two cities. And the average one is uh, 3,069. And the next one is the Nanjing. And the Nanjing is very near the Shanghai. You can take one hour train to Shanghai. But you can see that compared to Shanghai, Nanjing is rather low, near the uh, 75 percentage of the Shanghai's fee. So you can see that uh, um, there's some transition of the software programming to the low cost center. Uh, for example, we only uh, have the software, for example, uh, the uh, algorithm or the some high talent uh, software in the Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen. And the others, for example, in the uh, big data search, we have some the uh, data label and the data clean, and this kind of simple things can transition to the low cost centers. And uh, Xiamen, Xiamen is very, uh, very near the Taiwan. Actually, uh, Xiamen have a lot of the uh, programming center from the Taiwan company. Okay, and the Tianjin is very near the Beijing. You can see the place very near, and uh, you can drive the cars just one hour from Beijing to Tianjin. So uh, about the video and uh, some some regular programming change the from the Beijing transfer to Tianjin. And uh, the last one is Wuhan. Wuhan is in the middle, is in the center of the, in the center of the China, is along the Long River. And it's very famous for the car manufacture. Uh, and uh, this place, you can see that uh, uh, it's MMS only uh, maybe the 60% of the Taiwan cities, okay. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Agradecemos a Jim Liu por su presentación.